Alrighty, Cherubs. So today we're going to take that quiz. You want to go onto Canvas and um, load up the quiz for today and take the quiz on these six pieces. Remember, if you used your, uh, if you made your flashcards, go ahead and use them for this quiz. We want to do the title, date, um, medium, material, and location for each. Okay. Pause the video, go ahead, take the quiz, and then come back. Okay. Today we're going to talk about, we're going to wrap up the uh, prehistoric period. I'm going to talk about our last two pieces. These are the ones that you may have heard of before. Okay. We've got the Lascaux Caves in France and Stonehenge in Britain. Okay, we're going to start with Lascaux first and talk about these caves. Okay, now check out the date, 15,000 BCE. When these caves were found, they were originally thought to be um, fakes, hoaxes, because they thought there's no way that prehistoric people painted these. Okay, um, let's take a look at some of the images. See, this is the Hall of the Bulls here and you can see painted on the cave walls are these images of these animals they're horses there's deer there's um, bulls all kinds of, of different animals some with patterns some with colors um, they overlap each other so if you think back to uh, the running horned woman how those images were superimposed that's what we're going to be getting here too now again we don't know why we don't know why these were made um, there are theories there are guesses but we're not sure okay the Lascaux caves has a bunch of different passageways with decorations throughout okay and here's part of the Hall of the Bulls side view so again, you're seeing these images that overlap each other. Again, different size, different scaling. So what we can tell is that this was created not at one time, but throughout time. We also know that they did not live in these caves. This was not just decoration in, um, you know, for their living room. This isn't living room art. This has deep significance to them because they're inside. They have to go pretty far into the cave to... Um, get to these sites and paint. Okay, so it is dark. It is black. This is not the mouth of the cave. They're not living here at all. Maybe towards the entrance, the mouth of a cave, you would see dwellings and remains of our evidence of dwelling, but not in here, not where the paintings are. Okay. They are going to find some evidence of scaffolding to reach higher places within the caves. Um, so there is that. Now we know that they are done in charcoal and ochre, which is this uh, very highly concentrated mineral pigment. Okay, with these natural earthy colors here in these walls. Now you can't actually visit the Lascaux Caves anymore. They've been closed off to tourists because of the damage from people's breath, their breathing, the moisture. Um, has started to deteriorate them. So the French government, what they did was they created a replica next door, you know, so that you can go and visit and tour these sites, um, the replicas, okay? So if you go and see the caves, they're, again, they're replicas. They're not the original site because those are closed to tourists. Now, what I want you to do is click here Oh, this is so good. This is so good. It's the Lascaux website. So if if it is in French, you want to just click down here on English, EN for English, if it pops up in French. And we're going to start this guided tour. And this is going to run you through the caves. Now I'm going to turn down the sound here so we don't have to listen to it but it's going to walk you through and I want you to take some time and just look and so if you pause like when a thing pops up you can click it 
a little tab there, and it'll show you a still image, and it'll give you some more information. Okay? It's so incredible. You can zoom in on it. It's so great. Okay, close that. You can Ken see Hilton, it. Can kind of some more. Jeff Hilton, if you're in the building, would you please come see? Thank you. Nice. Some more of those images. Okay, let's go back. So I recommend just going through this. Take your time. Have a good look at this. Oh, the Chinese horse, the Mongolian horse. Okay? Just go see what there is to see. Experience this. We live in an age of wonders that you can experience this. Um, marvel virtually. So please take this opportunity and explore the Lascaux Caves. Okay, read up on some of these things. It's remarkable. It's a really cool website, but it's, it's a remarkable experience. Um, what we're going to do uh, throughout the course of this year, we're going to meet various art historians and hear their take on some of these things. And I want you to, we're going to go ahead and watch Sister Wendy. Sister Wendy um, is an art historian. She happens to be a nun and is really, really remarkable and, and, and really beloved in the art, his, the art history community. She just recently passed um, a few years ago and uh, is greatly missed. She is a remarkable person. Uh, yeah, so we're just gonna watch what she has to say and hear what her thoughts are about the Lascaux Caves. The story begins here, in the Dordogne in southern France. 20,000 years ago, it all looked quite different. Covered in ice and snow, the haunt of woolly mammoths and reindeer, which were hunted by our small, hairy ancestors. Primitive? Yes. But here, somewhere underneath my feet, is the proof that they were like us in all the ways that really matter. And I think this is really this remarkable thing that she's um, a nun, but has accepted um, evolution as as this thing. And I think that's really it's really cool to hear her speaking of it. Now you can see Lascaux, the caves of Lascaux two. So this she's going into the replica. Okay. With only their flickering lamps to guide them, the cavemen felt their way down into the earth. When the prehistoric artists came to Lascaux, the caves were impenetrably dark. These great images were not made to be seen, still less to be sightseen. Why did they paint them here in the depth of the earth down winding corridors? Some people thought that they were priest painters making hunting magic for the tribe. But the animal the tribe lived on, using every part of it, a kind of walking supermarket, was the reindeer. And they didn't paint reindeer. What they paint are the great bulls and bison and the, the wild deer, all the animals they didn't hunt, but they watched them. Take my favorite image, the great horse, the Mongolian horse. The Mongolian horse doesn't really look like that with that great sway of the belly and that sharp nose and the inspired black calligraphy of the legs. It's, dare I say it, an impressionistic horse, an impression of a horse, and yet an odd impression, almost as if the artist was not trying to show what a horse was like, but what it 
felt to be a horse. Or look at the great bison. These, these two great black balls of male erotic fury going to explode on one another. He's looked, the artist. He's seen that one of them is losing his coat because it's spring, the rutting season. Observation, and yet emotionally, how right. That great red streak shows something of the, the feeling of the animal. And it's this looking with awe and, and with wonder that makes Lasco what it is. Because all these animals are beautiful. And centuries ago, when there was room on Earth for all of us, how humankind must have yearned to be strong and beautiful, free, innocent, all the things that they were not and we are not. And perhaps that's why they made these images secretly in the earth, to honor the animals. And so you see, scientifically, these are primitive people, because science advances it's like a ladder, one step leads to another. But art isn't like that. Art is about being human. Children make art instinctively. Archaeologists know when they find evidence of art, they found evidence of human beings. It expresses all that is best in us, our, our, our desires, our hopes, our, our truth. And so art changes, but it doesn't get better. And in the great hall of the bulls, with these images of majesty and power, so strong, so dignified, we understand that painting starts at the top. And we know that uh, Picasso, when he went and saw these caves, he said, he famously said, when he came out, we have learned nothing. <laughs> that we are still trying to recreate. Like, we're, we're no better at art than we were 15,000 years ago. That we have learned nothing. Really, really powerful statement. Okay? Now, these two videos are a different theory. So Sister Wendy's going to say that, sh that um, they are going to uh, honor the animals with their art. Dr. Nigel Spivy is another uh, art historian, and he's going to uh, give his theories as to what uh, these mean. I'm going to link these videos down below. I'm going to uh, put them down there so you can watch them uh, on your own, but I'm going to move on, okay? Because his theory is fascinating, is very, very interesting, and I do recommend watching it. I'm just going to skip it right now, um, but please watch it because it is very, very good. Okay, so the idea that they're formally, these cave paintings, they're twisted perspective, which means that you're seeing them uh, impartially in profile and partially from the front. So you're seeing their horns, for example, as if they were looking at the, you were looking at the front of the animal, but you're seeing the head from the side. So they're twisted perspective, all right? They overlap and are created with those earthy colors, okay? Perhaps they're used, again, We've got many different theories, many different ideas on why these were made. And uh, again, watch uh, Dr. Nigel Spivy's uh, presentation in the videos down below. Okay, uh, 650 pieces, paintings within these caves. Remarkable. Remarkable. Okay. Now, my last prehistoric piece is in Britain, and it's Stonehenge. We know that Stonehenge was created with stones that were um, taken from hundreds of miles away. All right? We know that it acts as a sort of calendar, that it lines up with the solstices, the summer and the winter solstices. Okay? We know that what you're seeing here is in fact not what they found. People just didn't stumble on this and find this. This has been, the site has been restored. And 
they have come back and put these stones back into these places where you can see in this arrangement. So they did use cranes to lift them back up into this, but it wasn't always uh, like this, okay? Now you can see here that we've got post and lintel architecture. We've got the posts, which are the verticals, and the lintel is the easiest way to make a doorway. The lintel is the crossbar up at the top. Now these are held on, you see these little knobbies up at the top right here? Let me come back here and you can see it again right here. They're held on with these little knobs, like Legos almost, to, so that they wouldn't fall off. That's called mortise and tenon, all right? Now you can see that Stonehenge was part of a much larger complex. The stones were arranged here and they were in a, uh, within these barrows and they line up again with the sun uh, rise and set on the solstices. All right. Again, here's our post and lintel. So this is our first architectural term that you're going to need to know. There is a flashcard for this, so please make sure you fill it out, post and lintel. Uh, the problem with post and lintel is that it, it's not very stable. You can get too heavy and it can collapse. Now here's mortise and tenon. The mortise is the hole and the tenon's the little Lego knob that st sits on top and they stick together, okay? So that's how Stonehenge was connected, right? I'll link these videos down here. They're gonna give you some information, more information about Stonehenge, okay? And that's just for fun. All right, so Stonehenge we know is one of many sites uh, within Southern England. Uh, it took about a thousand years to construct. They arranged and rearranged the stones. They drug them from, like I said, hundreds of miles away. Uh, the large um, megaliths, big stone megalith, um, some of them are 20 feet tall, okay, and weighing 50 tons. They're enormous. And so we don't know how they did it, which is again, even more remarkable, because we needed machines to put them back into place. Um, so we, we don't know how they did it, okay? Now these are our prehistoric pieces. This wraps up the prehistoric section, okay? So the Lascaux Caves, Stonehenge, Mortise and Tenon, Post and Lintel. Fill out these flashcards for next time, and we'll have a quiz. And, and then next time we're going to talk about the ancient Near East.